Okay, right, so I didn't expect to be towing a gooseneck trailer with this thing so soon, but it brought up a really good point, and a number of you guys are out here doing hot shot, towing a gooseneck trailer completely wrong. Okay, a lot of you guys, you'll have the neck coming over, and you'll be taking your cord, and you'll be sending it over the top of the tailgate and into the back here, or you'll be doing it the way I do it and stick it through the back and through. And either way you do it, it just doesn't look professional at all. It doesn't. It's, it's a magnet to DOT. They want to look at that kind of stuff. If it's rubbing on the tailgate, you get a DOT violation. So, what do you do? Drop the tailgate, and then you come over here, and you pick yourself up one of these things. You can get this on Amazon. It's super freaking cheap. It's less than $50, <clears throat> plus the whole saw, or you can pay somebody to install it. But what this is, is this goes into, you see right here, this goes into the back side of your factory harness. Behind here, it clips right in the back, plug and play, and then you run the wire up and you can put this wherever you want it. So here's another seven way connector. I'll give you a little self tappers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plop this bad boy right in here somewhere. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I don't want to look like an idiot pulling a gooseneck trailer. Any of the other guys, you're not prepared and you're running the damn thing over top of the tailgate. And it's just not right. So, get rid of that. We're gonna start drilling. I'm gonna show you guys how to install one of these things. Now, I'm not sponsored by this. This is something I always buy these for trucks that I get. Like I said, it's only 50 bucks. I'm not super worried about it. This is just generic something you can get from Amazon. But I do recommend them 100%. So this is what it'll look like on the back side. Like I said, it'll plug into the back of your factory harness. One goes into the back of the seven way, one goes into the, your factory harness, links them all together, come up here, run them through there, all good. So without further ado, let's start drilling. Now, you are gonna need to get a hole saw for this too, so that might add a little bit to the value, maybe 20 bucks, who knows. I got this with the hole, or the plug here, that's what it came with. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just using it. It is a little big, which is not really a big deal because I'll show you guys here. So you'll put that in there. It should be about the right size, you know? We, sh we should be all right, and then maybe we'll have to worry about the top part, but that's what it came with. So I know where I put mine on the last truck. There's plenty of room back behind here, so we're gonna try to get it as leveled up as possible. It really doesn't matter where we put it. Um, I'm gonna try to eyeball it pretty decent, and we'll go from there. Pick a spot, send it. And there you go. There you go. Plenty of room back behind, perfect size hole. This is what's going to end up behind it right here. That'll plug right in. So I'm going to get this. Obviously, you can't start from the top and go down because I don't know. I don't know that that'll fit down through there. I'm going to try, but if not, it's not a big deal. I'm going to go grab my deburring tool and deburr some of that. All right, so I got my deburring tool. Every guy, everybody should have a deburring tool. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to take this. We're going to put in a lot of this. See what we got in here because some of this stuff looks pretty uh some of it oh here we go this is what i'm looking for so we're going to put this guy in here tighten that down now we'll take our standard deburr and side again. yourself somewhat decent of a hole that's where we're gonna put it you'll be able to flip it up plenty of room up top plenty of room on the side I can get it back out go figure that was a bad idea there we go so I am gonna try and see if this will fit down through there if it does great the last I know that I was fighting the last one that I did 
Oh, cool. Actually, that might make it easier because I just broke the zip tie. So, with a good swift kick, I was able to get that actually to go through there, which makes this job so much easier than it was last time. Uh, you're going to want to put the big connector through first to make sure it fits. I had to kind of give it a little nudgy nudgy in there, but here Liam organized that kit for me. So, I will uh, get this put on here, we'll drill the holes, and we'll set her through. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to break out our little, uh, what is this? This kit comes with a quarter inch self tapper so we're gonna want to make sure that this fucker is level right about there so what we're gonna do we're gonna start our hole now I am not going to keep these in here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of them in with a actual ratchet as opposed to this Okay, so there's two. Remember, we have four of them. And you're going to want to make sure you don't get too wobbly on it as well. You don't want to damage the plastic. Okay. So we have all the holes. I, I mean, I know you can do a rough slap it in there and call it a day type deal. You know, old me totally would have done that. I don't blame you for that. But, I want to get in here, get all the little metal shavings out, make it a nice little hole, we'll call it a day. Now, I will say, you can paint this, do whatever you want. I'm not going to throw paint on this. I really don't care. Because by the time that you know, Russ is going to take over. It's like, I'll have gotten rid of the truck anyway. I doubt this truck's going to survive longer than five years. It'll probably be parted out. Or, when I buy another truck to replace it, all the parts from this truck will go on that truck. There we go. Get that nice and tight. 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 Put these in by hand. And I have a tiny little ratchet. Yes, you could be using a quarter drive. Um, this is all my drill, the only thing I have for my drill, so that's why I'm sending it. That one's tight and there you go. Installed. Now, I looked like an idiot for probably three or four years before I finally installed one. Um, I don't know why I installed one. I don't know if I just, it looks like this might be where someone put one right here. Could have been, I wanted to get it out of the way just in case I had to use the bed. So if you guys look, I have a turnover gooseneck ball and I like this better than I like the rails. So if I ever need to use my bed, all I gotta do is turn this upside down and boom, I have this much bed space. And then this is right there. I don't have to worry about it. And I don't have to worry about it sitting in the bed and getting water in it because that's what uh, happens to people that put these in the bed. All right, you guys can see that it comes out from back there. You can see all the clearance it has. So we're gonna try to route this thing. We need to unplug the seven-way connector right here. Look how hard that was. Oh, would you look at that? Huh, it appears as if we have ordered the wrong one. That's kind of disappointing, it says it fits Dodge. Well, there's our screw up for the day. I am uh, gonna have to send back a complaint because I do realize this is the one that was on my last one as well. So now I'm gonna have to go and get a different harness because they kind of screwed up. Go figure. All right, so that was not a plug and play. So we had to go through with the butt connectors. I haven't heat shrunk them or made it permanent yet. I just went through, I'll show you guys. We're using the multimeter. I had to go through every one of them. So, Liam, put it on the middle. Right. There you go. Bottom right. Bottom left. Left. Top left. Top right. Right. 
middle. Okay, all good. Now we're finally done with that. I'm gonna go and heat shrink all of that and you know, make it, make it look pretty, make it so that it's not gonna corrode and shit. Liam's the one who got to help and do all that. So our little connector is over there. I'll give you a test uh, once we get to pull a gooseneck to show you that it does work, but we've already proved that everything down here is perfect. So as long as this connector works, that connector will work as well. All right, so as y'all can see, there it is. We have it all nice and neat, held up there. Might throw a couple, might throw a couple cable ties on it, who knows. But, so organized, I cut off a good chunk since it wasn't a plug and play unit. Uh, like I said, I cut off a lot just so that it could be a nice snug fit. It's all done, looks all pretty. We'll test her on a gooseneck in a little bit. All right, you guys think I was gonna leave you in the dark? I'm gonna give you guys an example of this thing working. So I'm gonna come over here to this nice gooseneck trailer, grab the connector right here. And we're gonna plumb it over to the Dodge. All right, you can see we have the thing plugged in. No funny business. All right, so you guys will be able to see back there. I'm gonna turn the lights off for you. Four ways. Left, right, brakes. The only thing we don't have is running lights for some reason. So we'll figure that out when the time comes. I'll probably check it out tomorrow sometime, but that seems to be the only thing we do not have is running lights. We're still, same take, plugged in. So the only thing we don't have is running lights. That should be pretty easy to diagnose. Like I was saying, if this thing was plug and play, like it was supposed to be, if you get the right one for the Dodge, it'll take you probably 15, 20 minutes to get the thing installed. Uh, it took me about 45 minutes between going back and forth, making sure all of the wires were correct. So we're just missing that one thing with the running lights. We'll get that taken care of, not a problem. So you guys are interested. We got the light bar up there. I'll put a link down below, but if you guys want to see it, I will say we got a flash warning. There's the light bar. It comes up amber. And if, if you're really interested, it lights up both. So we got amber and white. But that's not all. For you guys that are interested in the aux beam light bar, you can make it flash amber, white, or both. And then you can have the standard feature. You guys are interested in fuel savings go down in the description check out mud flap go check out some of the other description links there we have amazon affiliate links for all the stuff that i use specifically so if you guys enjoy any of that stuff go check it out if you want to see my instagram facebook tiktok everything is down there in the description feel free to send me a message at centralpalogistics at gmail.com and i will see you guys in the next video take care and have a good one